What's up, y'all? It's your boy Dawson from D&D TV. Thanks for rating, commenting, and subscribing. Everybody who's donated, those of you all who will, I appreciate it. Remember, the donation link is in the description box. Also, check out my other YouTube channel, Dawson Speak TV. Let's get into this story. After allegedly threatening to take his life last month over allegations that he raped two underage boys, Pastor Ronnie Gorton, a married father and lead pastor of the Awakening Church in Atoka, Tennessee, was indicted Monday on 47 counts of illegal relationship with three underage boys. Among the charges are five counts of aggravated sexual battery, 17 counts of sexual battery by an authority figure, two counts of continuous sexually abuse of a child, 16 counts of statutory rape by an authority figure, two counts of exploit exploitation of a minor by electronic means, two counts of contributing to the delinquency of a minor, two counts of purchasing alcohol for a child, and one count of rape. Now I'm going to let y'all watch this video and I will be back with the rest of my commentary. Tonight, we're learning new details on the former minister now accused of rape. We were there as Ronnie Gorton was booked into the Tipton County Jail. He's charged with 47 counts, including sexual assault and rape. One of his victims was under the age of 13. WMC Action News 5's Janice Broach joins us live now from Tipton County with the very latest on this investigation. Janice? Well, that former pastor of the Awakening Church, Ronnie Gorton, is being held on a half million dollar bond. A Tipton County grand jury indicted him on Monday. He was picked up today. It's terrible, the whole situation. It's, it's kind of the thing that, like I said, just makes you want to throw up, you know, just sitting there thinking about it. Jessica Yale, a former member of the Awakening Church, talked about allegations against the church's pastor last month. Now, Ronnie Gorton is charged in a 47-count indictment with sexual abuse involving three teenage boys, one under the age of 13. Ronnie, what do you think of the charges? Do you want to say anything? Tipton County investigators picked up Gorton at his parents' home in Union City Tuesday afternoon. The 39-year-old married former pastor is charged with aggravated sexual battery, rape, statutory rape by an authority figure, enticing a child to buy alcohol, and exploitation by electronic means. In their very nature, these charges are appalling. But you given the fact that this, the suspect, the alleged offender in this uh, instant is a pastor, someone that we trust, someone that we worship with on Sunday, someone where we send our children, it's egregious. It's, it's beyond disturbing. Investigators started looking at Gorton when a 17-year-old boy recently came forward and said Gorton sexually assaulted, molested, and raped him several times in the former pastor's home. The Awakening Church is now closed. There is a for lease sign in front of it. And the investigation into Ronnie Gorton's activities is ongoing. Investigators want to know if there are any more victims. Live in Tipton County, Janice Broach, WMC, Action News 5. All right, y'all, let's go in. No matter how many stories I've done on topics like this or that I will do, it always amazes me how when I do my research and I'm looking on the church's website and I'm looking at some of the pastor's preaching videos and this pastor the Awakening Church uh, Ronnie Gorton does have a YouTube channel and I looked at you know different things that, on their Facebook you know on his Facebook because his wife she deleted her Facebook page and I'm gonna get into all that in a minute and to see how you know how loving they come across and they want to do a work for God and people in the church are oh pastor we love you and oh we're such a community church and we're going back in the community and we're doing this for the Lord and I always ask I always ask y'all why no one in the church can discern that the pastor has a secret life why no one in the church could discern that these kids these young boys boys were being molested Teenage boys, no one, no one, no one, not even a, a church that fellowship with them. And it's also troubling because I look at a lot of people's comments on social media. 
I look at a lot of especially stuff that comes to my Facebook page and other people's Instagram and Facebook and even on YouTube. And there are so many people who always want to say what the Lord is telling them. And the Lord spoke to me about this and the Lord spoke to me about that. And they want to give warnings or they want to give whatever they want to give out in a post on social media. But when it comes to your life and your church and things that are going on with your family, how come the Lord doesn't speak to you about that? That's what I always and it, it, you know, and one thing, too, is like for people and I, I've even told some of my family members this and some of my close friends. I mean, you come and you say the Lord said and the Lord said this, but the Lord don't tell you to take care of your health. The Lord tells you everything, but the doctor had to tell you you had high blood pressure. The doctor had to tell you about the sickness you had. The Lord didn't love you enough to tell you that something was going on in your body. Now, come on now. If you're supposed to be that spiritually minded that the Lord talks to you about everything and you're super spiritual over everybody else, you're a super saint. How come the things that affect your life, the Lord is not telling you anything about that? And this is not for everybody. This is for them people who the Lord is always talking to you. That's just a thought. Just a thought. <laughs> now, when the news reporter went in the pastor's neighborhood and they interviewed some of the pastor's neighbors, one of the neighbors uh, stated, we knew he had a church, you know, and he had boys over a lot. The neighbor, Donnie Overbook, told the news reporter, he said, nothing seemed out of the ordinary we thought hey he's doing something good he's taking these kids in and doing some good things but now we know he wasn't doing any good things with these kids he was in fact molesting these kids and it, you know i i was thinking about what the neighbor stated and we know there are a lot of churches and a lot of organizations that help kids out and do all this kind of stuff but my thing is parents you got to talk to your kids you got to create a safe space where your kids can come and tell you everything. And then you have to, no matter if it's the pastor, if it's uncle, if it's granddad, if it's who, you've got to vet these people. And really, you still got to do background checks. You can't just send your kids out here to any and everyone. And like Chief Billy stated in the news clipping with the reporter, the fact that this is a pastor makes this more egregious and makes it more disturbing because many people... Do not expect this type of behavior from a pastor. Many people trust their pastors, that they can let their children, you know, uh, you know, be around their pastors. And some even have let their, their children go over to the pastor's home, not thinking that the pastor who gets up every Sunday and Wednesday night or Tuesday night and preaches about the love of God and preaches on hell and everything that's morally right is going to be the person that harms your child. All right, now let me deal with his wife here. Now, his wife, Rhonda uh, Gordon, uh, stated, I moved out of the house and I filed for divorce in December after enduring years of abuse myself and knowing nothing about the current charges. Now, I don't believe that. As myself and the other victims struggle to heal, move forward, and rebuild, it would be most helpful not to come up on Google search as being associated with the one who dealt out the abuse. Now, her being so worried, I understand she is an administration liaison for some company that she's with, and it's, uh, I guess, a pretty well-to-do company, and she doesn't want her name to come up with it when they search her ex-husband name, or he's still her husband. She filed for divorce, but they're still married now. And to me, I'm like, Rhonda, you're trying to, you know, dissociate yourself from the situation, but people also are going to look at you because you were married to this man for 15 years and you have a son with him. And people are going to say, you filed for divorce in December when the rumors started flying around about the allegations. The last incident took place in on January 31st. This is all recent. And some people are saying, well, why did you file in December? Some people are basically saying she had to know something about it. And now that, you know, basically everything has hit the fan, she doesn't want her good name to be ran in the mud. Well, I'm sorry, Rhonda. You were married to this man for 15 years. When we Google search and come up with Pastor uh, Pastor Gordon, your name comes up as well, too. Because a lot of people in that church and in the community, they understand you're the, you were the first lady, you were his wife, and some women at times, they, they get hit on the blind side. They don't know. But in most cases, when, you're past, when your husband has these boys constantly over his house, come on, Rhonda, 
over his house. And the neighbor said this. And that 17 year old boy said he was molested multiple times at your house. How did you not know? Now, I understand you want to save face. You don't want to be pulled up when people uh, put it in on Google search. But you're a much part. You're a part of this just as he is because you're his wife. Now, maybe I'm wrong on that. Y'all get in the comments. Tell me what you think about that. Maybe she didn't know. Maybe she did. But I'm saying you had to know something. You had to know something. And uh, I know people talk about women's intuitions. Women know. Now, women know. And I stand by that. Women know. Now, she may not have wanted to act on the knowledge that she had because she wanted to keep the family together and, you, you know, the first family keeping that image going. But when stuff is starting to hit the fan and then you file for divorce a month before your husband basically is, all the allegations really suffer, you know, surface and they're doing the investigation and he's going to get arrested. Rhonda, people are looking at you like, nah, something is fishy with this. Something is fishy. Now, in conclusion, let me say that Pastor Ronnie Gorton is still in jail and his bond was set at $500,000. Now, I hope he stays in there a long time and I hope they throw the book at him. This is an ongoing investigation. And according to the chief and some of the other officers, they stated that there may be more victims that come out as the investigation continues. And I also want to say, I think we're going to know as the investigation you know, moves forward that the wife uh, Rhonda Gordon did know something about these, uh, these this uh, abuse that took place at her house. Now, as I've stated before on my videos, and I'm going to continue to say this, parents, look after your kids. The kids did not ask to come here. You have to raise your kids. And now more than ever, you have to keep a tighter grip. I mean, really a uh, watchful eye on your kids. There are some sick, deviant people in the world. And they come in all colors, shapes, sizes, and genders. You have to look out for your kids and have the conversation and open dialogue with your kids so they can tell you anything. Until next time, it's your guy Dawson. Take care of yourself, your kids, and each other. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this video. Please go off in the comment section. Don't hold back. Until next time, peace.